Hey YouTube people, today I want to take a look at the Surface Laptop Studio and explain what in the heck is going on. There are so many controls that you really don't realize what they're doing uh, when you play with the device. Uh, so, and, and there's drastic performance differences depending on what settings you have these in. And most people don't even know where to even look for this stuff. So I'm going to show you really quick where to go on your Surface Laptop Studio to change the parameters of your power settings. And then we're going to talk about what all those different parameters do. So first, we're going to look on the Laptop Studio and I'm going to do a screen share and show you exactly what you need to know uh, to see where to change these settings. So let's start there first. OK, so first. Uh, what you want to look for is when you're on your, this is on my Surface Laptop Studio, you're going to click this button uh, down here. There's a little battery. And if you click the battery icon, there's now another battery icon where it says your charging percentage. Now, if you click this and, and leave it to Microsoft to make this so confusing. Um, so in here, you have three options, recommended, better performance, and best performance. And these have drastic implications on the performance of your device and the battery life of your device. Some people <laughs> say, I get horrible battery life, and I guarantee it might be because they have this set to best performance even when they're on battery. So uh, I'm gonna set it to recommended for now. Uh, but that's where you change your three settings, three power level settings. And I'll show you what each one of these means in just a second here. There's a fourth power setting that you might not realize exists, and that is this one right here. Uh, when you are on battery, I'm plugged in right now, but if I, if I unplug, I have the battery saver option, and you can toggle this right here. And that also has power implications uh, that we will discuss in a second. Uh, but that's where you do it. Kind of cryptic, kind of hidden, but you want to make sure you know how to control this. Otherwise, you might have a bad time when it comes to either performance or battery life. So let's go look at what each one of these means. OK, so now you know where to change these uh, kind of hidden settings. Let's take a look and see what implications they have. So uh, it depends whether you're plugged in or whether you're on battery uh, because so basically there's six or seven variations on your power modes. But let's first talk about when you're plugged in. When you're plugged in and you choose the recommended option, your GPU watts are limited to 40. This, you know, if if you thought you were had a 50 watt NVIDIA 3050 Ti, if you're set to recommended, you have a 40 watt uh, NVIDIA 3050 Ti. So just keep that in mind. Um, and also, when you're on recommended, uh, your CPU bursts to up to 35 watts and let me show you what that looks like really quick so um, so in recommended if you have one thread loaded that ends up being about 14 watts no problem we didn't surpass the 35 watt limit two watts is 23 sorry two threads is 23 watts three watts is 23 <laughs> threads is 29 watts and uh, four threads is 34 watts really bumping in once you start hitting uh, five, six, seven, eight threads, it will cap your processor in recommended to, to keep you at 35 watts. Uh, so, so it really doesn't affect you with one thread, but multiple threads, it, it can affect your max performance. So anyways, uh, recommended caps you at 35 watts burst and 30 watts sustained. And when we bump it up to better performance, your GPU is now a 45 watt GPU. That's great. Uh, your CPU is now a 45 watt CPU as well, and it uh, the sustained watts moves from 30 to 35. Uh, so what that means, if we're looking at just thread by thread under better performance, uh, you know you go it actually lets your CPU boost a little higher to 4.8 gigahertz and use 23 watts with one thread. Uh, two threads goes to 34, three threads 37, and then up to five threads when you start bumping into the 45 watt limit. And then uh, it kind of slows down to that 35 watt performance level. And that equals, uh, if, you're, if, you're mag if you're being capped on in your sustained load at 35 watts, that's about 3.8 gigahertz, just, just so you know. 
And then under best performance, if you choose the best performance option, hey, look at you, you're now using a 50 watt GPU like you thought you had in the first place. Um, so make sure you have that turned on if you want full GPU performance. Uh, CPU burst watts goes all the way up to 55. And I almost think that this is actually, if you look at the settings, it could be 65, but the the it doesn't seem like the processor just, it just doesn't pull anymore. Um, it might be capped out. Uh, uh, at 55 watts it just as fast as it's going it's it's not going i mean maybe if we, i threw a different instruction set at it but in the in the load i was using on it, it it maxed out at 55 as far as i could tell and then over time uh it sustained load went down to 40 watts so you can see this is really programmatically applied by the the microsoft engineers recommended better and best you go from 35 45 55 burst 30, 35, 40 on sustained, um, just moving it up the line. Um, but you can see that definitely you want to be on best performance if you're benchmarking or if you're playing games. Um, keep in mind, all of these things that we're talking about are the theoretical limits of the device. Uh, if the chassis gets too hot, if you're really in a hot room, maybe the, the fans are blocked, you still have other factors like thermal factors that if if it's getting too hot, it will cap back down. So you might, you know, you're not going to see 40 watts all day long. You will if you have it on a desk and it's cooled adequately. But if it's on a blanket and it's like underneath something and the vents are blocked, you're not going to keep getting 40 watts because it would just get too hot once it once it hits. It still has thermal protections in place. That's what I'm going to say. But if you, if it's just on a table adequately cooled, just sitting there, um, this is what you're going to get. Um, and there's also there's also a, a fine line uh, where the GPU performance, if it's if it's if the CPU is going above a certain level, uh, some of that power gets pulled away from the GPU. That can happen. Uh, it's it's relatively minor. Uh, I can show you an example of that in the data that I pulled, but uh, that's plugged in. Uh, plugged in, you're you're pretty much always doing pretty much okay. 40, 35 watts to 30, 30 watts is great. 30 watts is pretty good performance. Uh, I mean, that's still 3.5 at 30 watts. Uh, th 35 watts could you 3.8. And if you're at 40 watts, that's 3.9, almost four gigahertz uh, sustained. So so this is, this is um, pretty powerful, pretty powerful. So when you're on battery, things change a lot. And you can think about it from a performance mode, but you can also think about it from a battery uh, mode. Uh, so when you're on recommended, your GPU is limited to 25 watts. This is on battery, which is probably good. You don't want to, I mean, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to be maxing your GPU out when you're on battery. It would drain fairly quickly. But 25 watts and uh, your burst, it goes from 20 watts down to 10 watts sustained. Now that's on recommended, and that's pretty aggressive power throttling, um, but that's how you're going to get the best battery because the second you bump it up to better performance while you have it on battery, the limits go up a lot. So you go from 25 to 35 watts on better performance. Your burst mode goes to 40 from 20, and the sustained watts, it can handle 30 on battery. So if you are getting really bad battery life on your laptop studio and you're not sure why, make sure you have it set to recommended here um, because it, if you're in better performance or best performance mode and you're just you know kind of idling or you have something in the background but the CPU thinks it can pull this many watts if it wants to, um, a lot of times you know you can let background processes and things like take a little more time uh, but stay at a lower clock speed that's just more efficient. So if you guys are, are, are having trouble with battery life, make sure you're in recommended mode when you're not plugged in because it's going to help a ton for your battery life. Uh, I'll probably do a video on how to even improve that further, but my guess is the people who are complaining about battery life on Laptop Studio are not set to the recommended on the battery. Um, so uh, better performance bumps your GPU up to 35, 40 bursts down to 30. 
And on best performance, you're still capped at 35 watts on that GPU. Probably a good call. You're still on battery. Um, CPU burst watts goes all the way to 55. It actually matches the best performance plugged in when you're in best performance on battery mode. So be careful here. You have the full power of the CPU if you have it turned to best performance while you're on that battery. So that's kind of interesting. Battery saver, uh, if you enable that toggle that we talked about, 25 watts on the GPU, and it does something funny here. This is really quite odd in my estimation. Um, the battery saver mode actually just kind of sets your PL1 and PL2 to 15 watts. So recommended actually throttles you more than battery sa saver, <laughs> other than it can't boost past 15, but it can sustain uh, 15 rather than 10. So really weird there, um, but I can, th I can show you probably in another video uh, about how to, you know, maximize your battery life for, you know, casual, you're just browsing, you're not, you're not, you know, a lot of time people are just watching a video or browsing, they don't need uh, their computer to be clocked so high up when you're doing a lot of that. Um, I, I'll, I'll do a video on that in the future. But these are, through a lot of testing, uh, this is this is what you can expect when you use those power toggles. And it's very integrated with the hardware and with Windows. It's just Windows doesn't even tell you. I, why don't they tell us this? Like, it's just a trial and error thing, I guess. But I, I guess I'm here to tell you what these modes mean and how important they can be for both your performance and your battery life. So anyways, uh, if you enjoyed that video, and you're rocking a Surface Laptop Studio, that's what these power toggles mean, and hopefully that helps you out. If you like this content, look out for more videos. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.